speak about my life experiences and uh, that is exactly what I will do in the next 15 minutes or so. So, amongst this time, I am not going to tell you anything new that you have not heard before or from your life experiences or from your superiors or peers, parents or anybody else. However, I have gone through in the army, I do not know much about the corporate world, but my experiences, what has led me to believe in firmly is what I will project in the next couple of minutes. To begin with, as was introduced, I come from an army background. My grandfather ran away from Ulal, where he grew up, to join the British Army in 1911. My father joined the British Army in 1942 during the Second World War. And I was always keen to join the army and so I, amongst seven children, was the only one who joined the army and keeping the flag flying. Actually, that was the glamorous part of it. The only reason I joined the army was to stop studying. But that was the biggest mistake I made, that I thought I'd have to stop studying. Because life in the army was study, study and study till the very end. And in any profession you go to, I'm sure it's going to be the same. Life as I see it in the army and how what it taught me lessons is what I'm going to put across to you. And also certain qualities that lead to success as per me. I'm sure you have all heard of this before, but to begin with, Training. Now training is something in the army or in any other curriculum that you choose is going to be tough in the initial years. We had four hours of sleep a day, very tough physical standards to achieve, but simultaneously a little bit of academics also. The reason why we were put through a rigorous physical strenuous and mentally robust exercises was to bear fruit in subsequent years and the hardship, the ability to withstand and sustain hardship. This is the hallmark of military training. It should also form a hallmark of your respective training whether it is in colleges, whether it is in your first job, push yourself to the limit. And when you can, when you are young, so that it bears fruit and sustains you throughout your career. Like they say in the army, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Apart from the training, what we were taught was to be gentlemen. And when I say gentleman, a gentleman in the true sense, where you do not let down your comrades, where you follow the correct values in life, you listen more than you speak, and learn more, imbibe good qualities, and be a true citizen in the society that you are in. So this is what we were taught. In the initial years, and I, like I told you earlier, I was more keen on sports, not so much on, on the academics, and I was okay in mathematics. In the initial years, when I did my long gunnery staff course in, course in the artillery, we had to learn a lot about ballistics. Ballistics is the science that deals with a bullet or a projectile or a rocket or a missile that passes through the atmosphere. Now this required a lot of mathematics. And I had to really strive, burn a lot of midnight oil just to understand ballistics because there were a lot of mathematics in it. But ultimately I got selected to be an instructor in this very same school. And I was teaching mathematics to other students who were coming. So from a person who was very weak in mathematics, I had to strive and I had to teach mathematics. My, my learning actually started when I started 
teaching mathematics to students, officers who were coming in to learn. So I, it was a great inspiration for them and I'm sure it will be for you to know that I, who was very weak and barely scraped through mathematics in school and college, was teaching mathematics after joining the army. Away from your comfort zone, uh, being in the army, and most of you all will also step out in life, you will be away from your comfort zone of your family, friends, carefully, student life, and you'll have to make each event count. And that is where your hard work, practice, and sheer dent will hold you in good stead. Hardships and sacrifice. There are numerous occasions when each one of you all will be called upon to make sacrifices. Sacrifices can be from sacrificing a meal to sacrificing much more than a meal in a day. Sometimes you are called upon to sacrifice your life for something very insignificant or seemingly insignificant. However, if the duty so calls, so be it. So you don't have to go through that extreme step unless you are called upon in the service of the nation. And you have to prepare yourself for such a thing. So therefore, it is very important to learn to overcome fear. Now there are many forms of fear. I shall come to that later on. So you have to come to terms with yourself first. Feel comfortable with yourself and only then can you meet other challenges. I have had to serve in high altitude areas which is over 14,000 feet. Beyond 9,000 we call high altitude and at 14,000 which is second stage where breathing becomes a problem. You walk 10 steps, you have to sit for 5 minutes to take further steps, uh, further um, breath into your lungs. And the space available on such high mountainous snowbound areas is very small. I have spent 3 months at a stretch non-stop on a piece of open ground at a height of 15,000 feet on the Chinese border and the flat ground was as much as this stage. It was basically say, 40 feet by 30 feet. And on that was a small little bunker for myself as an officer and there were a larger bunker for 22 soldiers all in that area. And we had to spend three months at a time before we were relieved on that bunker. So you can imagine spending three months, the first day was the worst, in a space 35 feet approximately by 30 feet. So how do you keep yourself occupied? You have to find ways and means of keeping yourself and mentally stable. In minus degrees, uh, minus 7, sometimes minus 15, and with wind chill factor, much more than that. But these are only physical factors, which you are provided with enough of warmth to keep yourself bodily warm. But what is most important is to keep yourself mentally fit. And that is where certain aspects of your training, certain aspects of the values that you have imbibed while growing up, from the time you are a child at home, to your training in schools and colleges, and in life in CD Street, or in the army, whichever profession you want to join. So your mental strength ultimately takes you much further than any physical prowess that you have. The other aspect is language. I came from the south of India and spent my entire career in the north of India. I had to learn to speak Punjabi, Rajasthani, Bhojpuri and smuttering of Gurkhali also. Actually, as a matter of fact, I forgot my mother tongue, which was Konkani. I am trying to relearn it with your help. And lastly is the pay and privileges. When I joined the army, 
I'll share something with you. Things have changed drastically. Our country has progressed tremendously. My first pay salary was 728 rupees. I joined the army so that I could, at an early age, so that I could stand on my feet and earn. And my first paycheck was uh, 728 rupees. I still preserve that. This was in 1980. Of course, you've gone a long way. The army is very well paid. You're very well looked after and you've got tremendous privileges. And this is what our nation has done for soldiers who serve the nation. These few images that I've put are of the sister service, not to leave them behind for those who are you inspiring to join the defense services. And now finally, I come down in this short span of time to put in so many experiences is difficult. But uh, what I feel I will share with you is what are the qualities to be a leader and which lead to success from the experiences I have gone through in the last 37 to 39 years of training and in the army. The first one is to be prepared to adapt. Like I said earlier, you will all have heard of these before, but coming from me, I would request you to pay a little more attention. Uh, as I have pitched it at your level, to learn to adapt. This world, nothing is permanent. You have to take the plunge when you are moved out of your comfort zone and adapt. If you do not adapt, you will be back into your comfort zone, but you will be left behind from the others who will step ahead. The next is self-discipline. There are various ways, what is called discipline, being punctual, being good, being upright, being this is all part of being disciplined. However, self-discipline is something that you have to judge for yourself. No one else is going to impinge upon that or influence you. Or you don't, you should not be able to be influenced by someone else in whatever you feel are the values you stand up for and be strict in your discipline for them. It also encompasses many other things like honesty, integrity, value systems and things like that, which I'm sure as you go by, you will learn. Upgrade knowledge and skills. The boys and girls and all of you who are imbibing something from these talks that all of us are giving you, there is no shortcut to knowledge and skill development. As Ms. Shonai has also told you, practice makes a man perfect. Similarly, upgrading your skills, you may be confident, you may be able to push your way through by the gift of the gab or your ability to but if you don't have knowledge and improve your skill base, you will be transparent and people will look through you. So, please learn to deal with fear and stress. I had mentioned it earlier. Learn to deal with fear. There are so many types of fear. Fear of the unknown, fear of the dark, fear of your boss, fear of your teacher. Fear of your parents, what they think of you, fear of the society, or learn to deal with it. Each one has a different experience, will go through a different experience, but you have to deal with it. You have to deal with the stress. Life will be stressful. You have to overcome it. How you overcome it is a long process of which you will internalize as you go by, but learn to. Remember, learn to. Need to appreciate good in others. Oh, this is what I felt uh, in part of man management, as part of uh, human resource development. And Walt, you will, everybody has got good in them. It is so easy for us to point out the bad in anything or in someone. But learn from the good in others and imbibe those qualities. However small or insignificant it may seem. Select an idol. Uh, as you go up in life, select an idol. I don't mean a matinee idol or a movie star or something like that. Please keep them on a different level. 
But select an idol in the profession you are in. Select an idol who you want to look up to or one day become like. Watch them closely. Follow their habits. Follow the way they dress. Follow the way they behave in public. Follow the way they have achieved what they have to achieve. And try to emulate them. Develop hobbies. I find this is one of the most important things in sustaining your mental well-being. Children, uh, students, boys and girls, you must inculcate the habit of developing hobbies now if you haven't. It can be anything, right from playing caroms, painting, to skydiving, bungee jumping, any hobby you pick up. Follow it with a passion and spend some time doing it. It will hold you in good stead. Today's world, everybody is running with a rat race, do not have time, the bosses and some the best excuse is your boss doesn't give you time enough, I have to complete my assignment, I have to do this, but whatever it is, do your time management, find time, take holidays, follow your passion or your hobby. This will prevent you from burning out early in life is what I feel. Financial stability, everybody wants to earn money. Yes or no? Everybody wants to be an achiever. But in my priority, like I've seen it, it comes way down in the list that I've listed out. And you can become rich provided you start financial stability and planning towards your future. So start early and by the time you reach a very senior level, either you'll have enough of money or money will not matter because your habits will be so frugal that you will not and in life you will always find a thousand people who are better off than you so there is no way that you can be the best or the richest there will always be a thousand ten thousand but always look at the millions who don't have as much as you have and that should propel you and feel self-satisfied in what you have achieved. And lastly, boys and girls, I would like to leave you with be an upright and proud citizen of the community and of your country. So this is what at the end in your twilight years if you have achieved. I know it is too early to tell you but you start now and you will reach there sometime. So having said this and covered, I hope I put it across in a nutshell what I felt and leave the rest to fate. A small story about fate because fate, I believe, because we live very far from our families most of our time in the armed forces and um, mostly in the mountains closer to God and we tend to believe in fate. Where you serve, with whom you serve, in whose company you are in, is not always your choosing. I'll give you a small story. I was serving once in uh, Tawang, which is in Arunachal Pradesh on the Chinese border, and I was coming home on leave. I was traveling in, in those days, it was a one-ton vehicle, and we were coming down the mountains, and there was a telephone line repair party. In the mountains, we lay lines to speak to each other. So, and there's a line laying party which was also going by foot. So they stopped my vehicle to take a lift to go down. So one man got inside. The other man who was with the drum, the, the wire drum for laying the line, he was still up. So he signaled to him, you, you take the next vehicle which was behind me to take a lift coming down. So he signaled yes. So he got into the next vehicle. And three kilometers down the road, there was scree, scree is falling rocks from the mountains and a big rock fell on the vehicle that was behind and crushed all three, the driver, the co-driver and this boy who got inside, they crushed. Now there was nothing to prevent this boy from coming and sitting in the first vehicle and probably the rock would have fallen on the first vehicle. So it is all fate. So if things don't go well, blame it on fate. If things go well, take credit for it. Thank you.
if there are any questions i would be thank you so much sir for your valuable insights and uh, i'm sure my friends over here would like to interact more with you and uh, know more about your thoughts so friends uh, we open up for the question answer session so if any one of uh, you would like to ask question to our guest so yeah there there are very few people from south of india who want to join these services so can we have a mic here hello sir wants to my name is uh, ranjit i am from kochi actually uh, last so many years now we read a chinese aggression into indian territory so i would, I would like to ask you was any point of time in, in the past that the arunachal pradesh was in chinese occupation for example during ashoka's time no? afghanistan and part of iran it was uh, ruled by indian king like that uh, any point of time in the past chinese occupied the present day arunachal pradesh on what basis they are claiming that it is our territory what is a dispute that we are uh, fail to understand this having served in the army for so long in the northeast also definitely there has been an influence from that region in our country the chinese in their cartographic map do include arunachal pradesh in fact right up to guwahati and the brahmaputra is shown in their map how right they are i have no authority to say so but i definitely know that when the british cartographer mac mohan was given the task to delineate and delineate the boundary between india and china he if you read that part of history uh, he went along from the himalayas along the himalayas and somewhere in arunachal pradesh he lost track they claim that he fell in love with one of the queens in that area and then he forgot about everything else that he had to complete the cartographic mapping and so the macmohan line is not clearly demarcated and that is why we are having this problem is that much i know but demographically as you all know the um, features physical features of all from the northeast are quite more akin i would say to those from that part of the world because of the influence they had whether it was from burma whether it was from china whether it was from nepal or from those parts of the country world so that is how i can best answer i your question thank you so much sir so any more questions from my friends yeah there is one hand up there hello sir yeah i am anuradha prabhu so i have a question to ask so we understand that enrolling in the army is implicitly agreeing to harsh condition and environment so how did you prepare mentally for such a condition and what can you suggest us for how can we possess such mentality to face any challenges in the life i think your question is in two parts how to prepare yourself to join the army yes sir and secondly how to be mentally strong thereafter firstly if you decide that you want to join the armed forces there is nothing that can stop you except two things one is being physically or medically fit and secondly to forego the comfort of a good homely life so these are the two basic uh, requirements as far as physical fitness goes i would request each one of you whichever field you are in physical fitness is a prerequisite you may be in any sphere of work in corporate sector and so all my fellow speakers and colleagues who are very high up in the corporate sector will tell you the same thing in india we are fortunate we get lot of holidays lot of leave and all but in other sectors and in the corporate sector no one gives you more than one week leave whether you fall sick or you don't so similarly in the army if you are not well you get left behind uh, how to do it for young people like you please run every morning and run for your life literally 
or develop the habit of going for your morning run and as you go out or uh, you go up in age you will that walk the run will become a jog and will become a walk but please go out and sweat it out for one hour every day so that is one as far as um, mental requirements are concerned all you engineering students or whatever field you are doing it doesn't require much to pass the entrance exam for the army so don't worry about that there are a lot of guide books that are there you just answer those and you'll get through thank you sir uh, thank you for uh, inspiring our friends about the army so thank you very much a uh, good morning everyone i am natasha kharvi wks scholar so my question to you is over a period of time you have learned how to overcome the uh, failures and the fears of failures so you are uh, you have been in an army so my question to you is how do you overcome the ultimate fear of that is the fear of death it's uh, uh, a very good question unless you are faced with it it's difficult to answer that question so since i have faced it many times actually there are three things uh, that i would base my answer first is the ethos in the army it is the pride that is in by you imbibe and is fed into you from a very young age the pride of being part of a unit the ethos that in that unit what we say alton that is what is supreme the second is when you are in the heat of battle the life of your subordinates is your responsibility and that is why as a good leader you take responsibility for your subordinates and lead so your pressure of having to lead your subordinates overcomes fear and uh, fear is very much there but you have to show to your subordinates your colleagues that you are strong and therefore they come up so that is why when you see most of the tv and other uh, news reports that you see there are a lot of officers uh, who are killed this is because they lead from the front and ours is one of the only armies where this happens and uh, the men that are coming uh, who serve under us as soldiers come from very very humble and rustic background and they will follow a leader unto death for the simple reason of their izzat their family's izzat their country's izzat and country comes last ladies and gentlemen it is their family a back home the community that they come from and then the country i hope i am sir so as you all rightly know this armed forces has this peculiar quality of being brave and fearless so sir one question from my side sir one more quality that armed forces do have is the self discipline that you mentioned in your slides sir i want to know how we as youth can inculcate this self discipline you know to in order to achieve our goals so since childhood we, we always hear from everyone that discipline if you want to have a look at discipline look at the armed forces of how exactly they live their life sir sir please can you share your thought on self discipline Uh, self discipline self discipline is something that you have to decide where you draw the line uh, no one else can tell you what is self discipline and self discipline i in my opinion i am sure there are others who have a better definition is something that you in your mind it can be in any sphere it can be financial it can be honesty it can be integrity there are certain intangibles in your characteristic intangible where you cannot put a finger to you couldn't cannot quantify it so those intangibles is where is more important to have self discipline you can be honest or you can be dishonest there is no partial dishonesty similarly integrity is either 100% or is non existent so something like that so you have to decide what is the discipline that you want to play for example i'll give you a small self discipline i gave an example to the young lady who asked the question how to be physically fit 
Now, if you have to get up every day in the morning at 6 o'clock and go for a run for one hour or 45 minutes, your ability to get up wherever you are every day without fail is self-discipline. It's very difficult to get out of bed when all your friends and colleagues are fast asleep. Despite the late night you worked, burnt midnight oil or went for a party, you come back 6 o'clock in the morning, you will get up. You may not go for 45 minutes, but you will go for half an hour. So that is self-discipline. So you have to inculcate it. No one will come and give you gyan in a college uh, classroom or something, self-discipline. Everybody will tell you, be self-disciplined. How you go about it is your individual choice. Secondly is honesty. Each one of us will be faced with this aspect of life. Oh, how honest you want to be is your it has to be either 100% or not existent. So, it has to come from within, is my easy way of explaining it to you. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable insights. And I would request Sri Lata to present a uh, memento as a token of appreciation. Hello, Thank sir. you all very much. Hello, sir. I have a question for you. Sir, uh, what are the opportunities for girls or women in the Indian Army? Sorry, I could repeat your question. What are the opportunities for girls or women in the Indian Army? Oh yes, uh, uh, the opportunities for girls in the Indian Army, they are fantastic. In every sphere of Army life, except the infantry, the artillery and the armored corps. The front line, uh, what I would say, Everybody else, engineers, ASC, the uh, supply core, the ordnance core, and um, everybody else, on the air defense, everybody has got lady officers and coming into the army, and they are doing a marvelous job. In fact, the young lady officers, despite their um, requirements of day to day, are going out of their way to command troops and some of our soldiers who come from very rustic backgrounds, I told you, or do not really accept a woman to be their commander. But this is changing. I must tell you, this is changing and they follow them as well as they would follow a male commander. In the Air Force, in the Navy, also in the non-combat, see, they are very much there in the Air Force, they are also becoming fighter pilots. So, uh, tremendous opportunities. In fact, the smartest officers I have seen are the ones who are joining now as lady officers. And I also want to tell you, they are not spared from any hardship and not shown any favoritism. Okay, so yeah. We'll have a lot of interaction sessions after this, I suppose, and you can come and ask me questions because we'll give chance for the other speakers. Yeah. Hello, sir. My name is Aditya. Uh, so, considering the fact that you were a part of the Indian Army and you said that the Army men have a lot of privileges, now I look at this. I was. I expect the same thing from the government side in the civilian world as well. So, considering the law and order situation and the police department of India, uh, they're not as you know equipped, well equipped or as well paid as the people in the army. Just as, as much as respect as the army gets, they, the, the servants of in the police department are also the servants of the government. So don't you think they need the support just as much as they get in the army? What's your opinion on this? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, if you ask me, well, who gives us the army the respect and the credit for what we do? It is the society, it is the populace, it is you. So you, I would say, if you give the same credit to the policeman who is standing on the road, gradually he will become capable of earning that respect. So not, what, why do we feel that the policemen on the road or the police are not given respect? The answer should come from within you. But despite that, if you give him credit for even one good that he does, instead of hounding him, 
I think in the long run, he will have pride in what he is doing. Like I take great pride in what I have done and I will, what I will continue to do in my retired life as part of society or for the army. So similarly, if he, that other policeman or the other person who is there ha takes pride in what he is doing, I am sure he will earn the, your respect. And what they require is respect from public. The government is providing them is with enough. The government has now started providing every service sufficient financial support for as far as the equipment is concerned. Everything is being provided. It is how much pride he takes in the service that he is doing is reflect directly in his ability to gain the support from the public. Thank you so much sir for sharing your insights. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a pleasure so, being with you.